Another general group of challenges that we experience in the region are those economic limitations. We're going to cover multiple economic limitations, but we're going to look at them in a progression. One is going to feed into the other, and then hopefully you'll see how they all compound to create an even bigger problem or a bigger challenge at the end. The first limitation we'll look at is a lack of diversification. Many Caribbean countries rely on primary products like cotton, sugarcane, bananas, ground provisions, and tertiary services like the tourism industry. Both of these industries are vulnerable to external shocks. That means that they are vulnerable to changes in circumstances that are outside of the control of the country. A diverse economy would be one that does not rely on one or two main economic sectors for its revenue, but instead would be based on the pillars of several sectors. A diverse economy might get a fairly equal percentage of its revenue from the fishing industry, the agricultural crop production, manufacturing, textile, tourism, and banking. This is just an example. But this example that I gave shows an economy relying on multiple sectors for revenue versus that which is the case for many Caribbean countries, which is that we rely on two main economic sectors agriculture and tourism. This lack of diversification ties into the low value of exports that we produce. Most of our exports from the region include low value, unprocessed primary sector products. Again, going back to the cotton, sugarcane, bananas, ground provisions, and so on. Let's look at this bunch of bananas. You might sell a hand, one of these hands of bananas for a mm, dollar and five cents each. That's, that's my guesstimate. Compare the price of that to the price of a packet of banana chips if you had to convert that same one hand of banana to banana chips. You might get a bag of banana chips for $2.34. This is because processing a good adds a value to it. Unfortunately, many of us skip this step of processing and instead we sell unprocessed goods as our exports. On the other side of the table, we have a high level and cost of imports in the region. Since we do not take the extra step of processing our own primary sector products, we end up buying those processed products from other countries. A large part of even our is from manufactured imports. And we don't just import food. We import petroleum, cars, medicines, and many other things. And as you can see in this table, these costs amount to millions of dollars. When we import goods, much of the foreign currency that we earn from our exports, when we sell to overseas countries, we end up having to use it to buy goods from them. So when you look at the net flow, the foreign currency that we make ends up leaving the country again because we import so much. That, in turn, leads to us having a high debt burden. When the cost of your imports is greater than the value of your exports, or to put it another way, the amount of money that you spend is greater than the amount of money that you make, you experience a budget deficit, which is the situation for most of our Caribbean countries. The imports far outweigh the exports. When these deficits persist, the country then borrows money to finance government spending, and so we incur debt. Government needs to spend on key sectors like infrastructural development, education, healthcare. That is without a doubt. However, if they are not making the money to spend in these key areas through the exports that we put out as a country, they end up having to borrow to cover those costs. And when we stay in the cycle of having budget deficits after budget deficit after budget deficit, we end up having to keep borrowing to cover our costs and digging ourselves into a deeper hole of debt burden. The final broad category of challenges that we will look at are those that relate to the geography and situation of the region. The geography and the situation of the Caribbean region make us particularly vulnerable to natural disasters. 
We're located between North and South America in terms of latitude in a region of the world that is the tropics. We have a tropical climate, which means that we are at risk of hurricanes. The formation of most Caribbean countries was influenced by tectonic plate activity and so we're also at risk of earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and other natural hazards. When those hazards cause damage, they can hamper our development in the region. Most of us have small economies and so that limits our ability to recover from these natural disasters. This excerpt here or this screenshot of a National Geographic article on Dominica and how the country's economy was impacted as a result of Hurricane Maria says that the hurricane cost Dominica just over two years worth of economic output. Imagine losing two years worth of your salary in a few days. And imagine having to recover from that when you have a small salary. That in essence is what happens to Caribbean countries when we are negatively impacted by natural disasters. Already our economies are small and not very diverse and so it's very difficult for us and in most cases it takes a long time for us to recover from these natural disasters. Fortunately for us, most of the money that we use to recover from these disasters comes from regional and international aid. So we don't need to rely too much on our own provision of the funds to recover and to restore ourselves, but it still does provide large economic setback. Here is a recap of the major challenges that we face in the region. As you can see, we did not get to all of them, but I hope I touched on enough of them under each category to give you a general sense of what you need to know and of what CXC wants you to know. I also included these websites here because most of the stock images that I used in this video came from them and I found them to be really helpful resources. So if you need stock pictures for any of your projects, you might want to check them out. Thanks for viewing and I hope this was helpful.